We were not explorers or experienced in expeditions to distant parts of the world, but we loved challenges and we were looking for new ones. The first stage over nearly four months was into Morocco, down through the central Sahara Desert and then into black Africa. We spent 12 months planning every conceivable detail. We purchased new Land Rovers in England, provisioning to cope for every eventuality we could think of. The Land Rovers were the latest turbo diesel models, strong and powerful for what lay ahead. We had special long range fuel tanks fitted and we carried more than 300 additional litres in our jerry cans. And so we headed eastwards into the high Atlas Mountains towards the Algerian border. There were very few detailed maps available and we had to constantly check our direction as best we could. Into Algeria now, and a route that would take us down through the Sahara Desert to its geographic centre at Tamarasset. To get our first experience with soft sand. To curse and swear, and then get serious with the sand ladders. This practice stood us in good stead as we headed deeper into the desert. From Tamarasset, we headed northeast towards the Libyan border and the ancient oasis settlement of Jeannette. The terrain was difficult to say the least. Tracks where they existed were strewn with boulders and washouts. It was hard to imagine it could rain like this in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Next morning, to our surprise and delight, the torrent had almost disappeared. Stopping at the village of Zotale and meeting with Ibrahim, chief of the Tuareg nomads in the region, who made us very welcome. With Ibrahim's blessing and confirmation that we were heading in the right direction, we raced across the piste again towards Jeannette. Meeting with Laid, a Tuareg tribesman, we spent time with him and his friends in the desert. The Tuaregs live in encampments in the desert using their camels to carry goods, often over vast distances. They are very distinctive people, very proud of their great influence in the desert. Sadly, much diminished now after tribal wars and terrible droughts. Past Tamarasset and navigating by compass, heading directly south for the Algerian Niger border at Asamaka. A godforsaken place, if ever there was one. We had an enforced stay for almost four days at the behest of the army. Asamaka was a staging post for the local bus company. They loaded layer after layer of everything and then headed off some 600 kilometers across the desert to the next large market town. Our escort had arrived. A bunch of Nigerian cowboys, actually racing the 600 kilometers to comparative safety. The bandits, as we were told, were only after our land roads, and given half a chance, they would take these and tell us to walk the rest of the way. And even the army got stuck, much to their embarrassment. So off again, as fast as we could travel, to pass beyond the reaches of Islam and the bandits, and to finally reach safety and civilization again in the friendly Nigerian township of Agadir. And then on to the small fishing village of Bourbon. We wanted to experience the life of a small village in Black Africa. And lucky we were to chance upon this one, to share some fun with the local children. And to watch the gathering of the water at the start of the day. Into Mali now, 
and crossing a tributary of the Niger River in typical African style. To reach Jenny, a 12th century market town which in the 16th century was the center of a major West African trading empire. The day starts early for the children in school, learning to write in Arabic with grace and style. It was market day, when African traders and their families travel for many miles to ply their trade. The colors, the sights and the sounds were quite exceptional. Turning south now to the Biendagara escarpment, home of the Dogon tribe since the 16th century, and before them the pygmies who lived in the caves in the cliff face. Amongst the Dogon, their rituals and fetishes have a strong association with death and the spirits, involving skeletons and blood tokens, and a medicine man who rules supreme, a way of life which still follows the traditions of centuries ago. Through the ebony forests, and then to finally arrive at the coast and our first sight of the sea for more than two months. To then spend some time sharing in the lives of the fishing villagers, to watch them at work. And so we completed the first leg of this journey into Africa at Abidjan, capital of the Ivory Coast. And so it was, just nine months later, that we returned for the second stage across Central Africa to Kenya and Tanzania. It was into Nigeria that our journey very nearly came to an end. Heading out of Lagos on one of the few stretches of Bitumen Road, our Land Rover developed a swerve wobble, slammed into the concrete median wall, spun off across the road and into the jungle, rolling down the bank and incredibly landing on its wheels. <laughs> to visit the village of near pygmies in the Central African Republic. Living at a subsistence level, but seemingly happy enough to sing and dance for us. Encountering a well-presented family with their precious Bible and a small memento from us. Crossing the Uli River in the early morning. Having to use our Land Rover battery to get the barge started and our diesel to keep it going. Zaire supposedly an explorer's dream. Maybe in earlier days, but certainly not under General Mobutu when we were there. Rather a country of chaos and corruption. Overwhelmed by militia, Mobutu's cowboys they were called. Wearing camouflaged zoot suits, dark glasses with yellow plastic rims, stoned out of their minds on the local weed, and unpaid for months. And with an abundance of AK-47s and machine guns, just wanting to get a share of whatever we had. Our route was to take us from Bungasu and down through the rainforest to Kisangani. Heading deeper into Zaire now. Vast tracts of bamboo with an abundance of highly colored butterflies and a growing abundance of mud holes which were getting deeper and deeper the further south we went. The seasonal rains had apparently started earlier than usual. And this had slowed our progress dramatically. Literally crawling now, with still much worse to come. 
and the log bridges were also becoming more difficult. A bit of a challenge, actually, knowing that if you got it wrong, there could be a drop of 20 or 30 feet to the river below and no hope of recovery. Meeting an overlander, we struggled together through deepening mud holes until we all became totally bogged. We realised we had no choice but to turn back. And at long last to the exit border out of Zaire. But not before the Zairean border guards threatened to blow us away if we didn't make a major financial contribution to their well being. Heading into Kenya now to spend time with the colourful Pocock tribe. And zebras, with literally every zebra having a different market, to follow some moments in the life of a female baboon, preening herself in anticipation, her mating call, and the quick response, quick indeed mother elephant with a newly born baby with the male in close proximity the magnificent lions and the scavengers of the plains the hyenas and so we survived the second stage of our travels across central africa